I'm Tom Welch, and thank you for tuning in to this video segment of Gas Powered Thoughts. Today we're going to be talking about setting the carburetors on a gasser. It's a question that we're getting asked more and more as more people are getting interested in the gassers, and it can be a perplexing subject that I'm hoping to clear up today with a video presentation to you. We will also be going to the field so you can hear it at the flying field too. The good news is, is that Zenoa has been making the engines and Walboro has been the carburetors on them for years. There are a few different series of carburetors. There's the 643, there's the 990, there's the 257 and some others, but the outside configuration is fairly similar on all of them and the needle location is the same, which makes it easy. So today we're going to show you how to set those adjustments to get your helicopter running the best that it can. If you're interested in more details on how the internals of the carburetor work, Carrie Shirley has a, a great article out on Gas Powered Thoughts. Please visit that. So what we have here is we have a 990, which is very common on the G270RC, G290RC. And we have a 257, uh, just as an additional carburetor, throw in the mix. Uh, it was used a long time ago. They're not as common now. I know some of the guys with the uh, 20 cc engines do like these so there's a few that are still kicking around out there but the nice part is that you can see that the adjustment needles are in the same position on either carburetor and what makes it even easier is that this is the bell mouth that would sit here with the air cleaner on the inside and uh, the adjustment needles are here and it would be the same for this carburetor so that's the reference point there's a few things I'd like to talk about uh, before we get into to setting the needles. And this is uh, back to basics. This is the stock Zenoa insulator. And unfortunately, it's a plastic insulator where they used a steel insert. And with the heat of the engine, these inserts can change position inside the plastic housing and it can create an air leak. So under really no circumstances do I think anybody should be running these in a helicopter with a Zenoa engine. Uh, the good news is, is that there are a number of aluminum aftermarket ones that are available and they all work uh, very well, doesn't matter what brand you pick, and they do things a little bit differently. They use a Teflon insulator to keep the heat from reaching the carburetor. And while we're on that subject, there is one uh, point where I have seen quite a few people uh, make a mistake in installing this gasket. There's a hole in this gasket and it has to line up with the hole in the engine, the hole in the aluminum block, and then the most important part is lining up with the hole in the carburetor. And uh, if we take the 990 carburetor, the primer bulb is here. And just opposite the primer bulb, there's a little dimple in here and you can see an additional 90 degree hole that goes through for this plate on your carburetor. It's obviously hard to see in the video. And that is the hole that must line up with this Teflon gasket. The other hole is a blind hole. You'll see no cross hole meeting with it. So you line this up and then you would install that on your engine. One other part of that is the Teflon is soft and it can take an impression from the carburetor and it's not symmetrical. So when you take it off, look at your lines on your Teflon and make sure you put it in the same, that you don't flip it over and orientate it the opposite way. Uh, that can also cause an air leak. So the other thing to watch is the bolts on the carburetor. They do like to occasionally come loose. So if you line up your portholes, uh, you check the tightness of your bolts and you make sure that you don't uh, flip the gasket around, you should not have air leak problems with this. When we start to discuss the needles themselves, and we will talk about this more at the field, but I'd like to show it here where we can make it a little bit clear. We're going to pick this 990. Its needles are a little bit bigger. When we talk about adjusting the needles, what happens is the needles are turned clockwise until they lightly seat and then you unscrew it to the amount that you want. That is what we're saying when we talk about the number of turns. In this case, this is where the air filter would set. Your high-speed needle, which has a little H on the body, is always closest to the air cleaner. 
your low speed needle is always closest to the engine. So it's a nice easy way to remember that. So if we say that we want to set this needle at one and a quarter turns out, we turned it in. Don't turn it in too hard, just till it seats gently. There's a half a turn. We would turn it another half a turn. That's one. And we turn it a quarter. And now this carburetor is set at one and a quarter turns out on the high. We could do something very similar to the low. When we discuss one sixteenth and one eighth of a turn, that's a very small amount. A quarter turn is literally only one quarter turn of the needle. And an eighth of a turn is half of that, as I'm demonstrating now. And a sixteenth of a turn is even less. So a sixteenth of a turn is almost just changing it the blade width of the slot and the screw itself. It's a very, very small amount. Once you're very, very close to having the carburetor set correctly, your final adjustments will be done within about one sixteenth of a turn for your final setting. I'd like to go over some of the, the basic setups uh, for getting the, the carburetor set up on the helicopter. With respect to the throttle curve, uh, there are many, many questions regarding what is the right throttle curve. And uh, the numbers are not what matters. It's really controlling the head speed that matters. Uh, relative to that, uh, I'm running two very similar whiplashes. The airframes are identical, uh, the gear ratios are identical, and the engines are similar with a little bit different state of tune, and yet the two throttle curves couldn't be any more different. Here is an example of this helicopter's throttle curve, and this is typical for a gasser curve where it starts from zero and by 25% you're in the I'll call it the 15 to 20% range. Then you're eventually getting to 25, 30% at mid stick. And then you'll climb at some other slope uh, going eventually up to 100%. Um, the first two thirds of the graph is the part that's hard to fill in. It has to be done with experimentation, which leads me to a quick discussion on governors. While certainly a gasser engine can be flown without a governor, it's my opinion that they are um, just such a big help that I would never consider flying one without a governor. And the governor helps you to figure out the curve for your particular helicopter and can keep you out of trouble. Whenever I set up a brand new helicopter, engine, etc., or change the, majorly change the program in the radio, I will purposely set my idle one to a low head speed, governed head speed. And uh, if I ever get into trouble with my throttle curve, I always know that I can get my head speed back under control by merely flipping the switch to idle one. Um, in addition to that, as you're setting the throttle curve, you can use the governor to help you hear the difference between the governed head speed and uh, where you are on your normal curve. So the, the governor can really be assistance for getting the whole helicopter set up. The one thing I wanted to mention and you'll get to hear it, which is much easier, is I call it four stroking. That's a common term used. These are two stroke engines. When you set the carburetors rich enough um, or extra rich, they will four stroke. And some call that a burble. Um, there's a couple different names, but I'll be using the term four stroke. And what that is, is extra fuel is entering the engine. And uh, that means that it doesn't always ignite on every uh, power stroke of the engine so that it makes a unique sound. That's a good sound. It's not a bad sound. A rich is good. If you lean out a carburetor too much, you will damage the engine. Um, so what we're trying to do is protect you from damaging the engine and, and listening. On an idle, it is very normal to have it four stroking um, for a portion of the time, certainly not the whole time. That's too rich. And once we're on to the high needle, if you're breaking in an engine, you would want to hear it for stroking for a portion of the time, I would say a 5% at most when you go back to zero pitch. And that just gives you a little bit of sign that you're just getting a little extra fuel occasionally, which is a good thing. Fuel occasionally, which is, uh, there is an overlap between a low speed and a high speed needle, and it's slightly different for each carburetor. We get fairly lucky in that we are not really uh, below mid stick, the governor's taken over, hitting a higher RPM so that the needles don't over or affect us all too much, but there is an overlap. 
uh, specifically on a 643 and 990. If you adjust the low speed, it has a small effect on the high speed and vice versa. So you do have to be aware of that and we can talk about that more. So we'll see you at the field.